Hi and welcome to another camping survival video blog. Today we, uh, Tim and I, Tim my cameraman and I decided to skate out of the office for a little bit. They're hustling over there but we're out here having fun and uh, I want to show you a couple of products actually. And the first one um, is the Emberlit stove. And this is how it comes, the Ember Lit Stove, E-M-B-E-L-E-M-B-E-R-L-I-T, -E 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 Stove. Um, yes, I can spell, I swear. And it comes in this package right here, and then it comes inside of a Ziploc bag. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start a fire in the Ember Lit Stove with my... Um, my uh, ferrocium rod, ferrocerium rod, ferro rod as some people like to call it, in the ember lit stove after we assemble it. And then we're going to uh, get, you know, get the fire built up and then we're going to get out my canteen cup and I'll show you a canteen cup in a minute. And then we're going to boil water, see how long it takes on the ember lit stove to boil water. Then we're actually going to make some pine needle tea and I gathered some pine needles a little bit ago, and white pine actually. And um, then we're going to um, put some honey. We sell honey now actually. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So there's going to be a, a you know, good, good couple good things to, uh, to have fun here with in the, in the video. The first thing I want to show you again is the ember lit stove. And this one's made out of titanium. It's super light. I forget that the weight is on our website. But um, I've been carrying the pocket cooker for years. I don't know if you've seen this one before. I did, I'm not sure if I did a video on it now. But it's an awesome pocket cooker. And I love it because it heats, heats up um, your water really quick. It gets really hot fires going, that type of thing. And you don't need a big, huge fire area. But the problem is weight. The pocket cooker weighs about a pound. And as you see, I still have it in my backpack for, for small trips, day, to day, you know, day trips, that type of thing. But um, if I'm spending any time in the woods and I'm concerned about weight, my new favorite is the Emberlit stove. It's a little bit more expensive because it is titanium. But um, this thing is awesome. So, your call if you want to get the pocket cooker, an ember lid, that type of thing. But let me show you how it goes together. I'm going to get down here and do this. And it's a beautiful day, by the way. Spring day in uh, central New York. It's uh, late April. And um, it's a little chilly out here, so we'll see how we do today. So you've got the pieces here. And you just start assembling them. And it's pretty easy to assemble actually. My hands are a little shaky maybe because I'm kind of cold out here. But, uh, maybe I'm making it more difficult than it has to be. But it's really easy. Yeah, let's see here. The pieces all just slide together and interlock. Like that. And then the bottom piece, there's little grooves. And you slip it in the grooves of the three sides. And you put the fourth piece on. It requires a little bit of bending, that type of thing. Whoop. There we go. A little bit of bending. And voila. We have the Emberlit stove. I'm going to make sure everything's locked in together. And it's not quite. There we go. I think everything's locked in well together. Perfect. Okay. Now the last part of the uh, setup, you don't necessarily need, but these two pieces here, I like them because I'm going to use my canteen cup today. And um, it'll help hold up the canteen cup. It also helps secure the amber lit stove a little bit. I did notice, um, I took this on a winter hiking trip about... Uh, uh, about a month or two ago, it was pretty snowy and cold, and, and we built a fire in the ember lit stove, um, and it wasn't quite level, so keep in mind that it really needs to be level. That's why you see I leveled this up here. So it, at the time it wasn't level, it was on the snow, and I put my canteen cup on it, and it actually, the joints came apart. So keep that in mind. They're just held together by friction. You know, it's nothing, uh, nothing difficult to do. Just make sure it's level. There. I think it's level there. So. What we're going to do next is get one of my favorite tools out, my canteen cup, 
And um, some so we have sell them in aluminum and stainless. I don't like the aluminum one myself. Um, when you heat it up, you really can't drink out of it. It's too hot. So the stainless, um, it doesn't hold the heat as well, so you can actually uh, use it. But in the Marine Corps, I've used this for digging, for brushing my teeth in, for bathing. I've done just about everything in this, these canteen cups over the years. Uh, I just love them. Some people like other types of containers, but I like that. So um, in a moment, we'll start the fire, then we'll pour the water in here, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So let's start the fire. I'm probably going to have to turn it towards me. And to start our fire today, I found some naturally growing um, dryer lint. There's a dryer lint tree over there. Just kidding. Uh, I grabbed a whole bunch of dryer lint, and uh, this stuff is great for fire starting. So, put a little bit of that in here, or a lot maybe. Move that closer to the door. Oops. And by the way, as you can see, there's a door here where you're going to feed the sticks and where I'm going to start the fire from. So, let me get a little more dryer lint. We're going to pack it because we're going to make a nice fire. Grab one of my sticks. Get that towards the door. And on top of this, let's take this off for now. We're going to start sticking some sticks in here so we can get our fire going on top of the dryer lint. And as you can see, I did in a previous video, um, I'm prepared to make a fire. We've got some small sticks here, and it graduates up to bigger sticks and larger sticks, and, and then until you have the largest sticks over there. And we're going to feed all the sticks, once we get it going, in through this hole in the side, which I'll show you again in a moment. But I'm going to use the hole to start the fire with right now. So, let's see here. Go ahead and get my ferrocium rod out, or ferro rod, as some like to call it, and I'll strike it with the back of my Leatherman uh, multi-tool saw blade. That's just what I like to use, just my preference. And uh, maybe Tim, if you can come back around here, over my shoulder, and then get this image here of me striking it. I've just got the dryer lint right there. There we go. Now we just got to get our fire going. Okay. So I'm going to feed in sticks on top of the dryer lint. And we'll get our fire going. I don't want to smother it though. There we go. Pretty darn easy, huh? I want to make sure I don't smother it, but I give it enough fuel. There we go. I'm feeding it in through the top right now just to get it going. But eventually we're going to get some bigger sticks in there through the side. And feed them in there. Okay. And the cool thing about this stove, you see me touching the stove. Um, this will be a challenge think about that. Oh well. Still put the canteen cup on top. Or I can use my Leatherman multi-tool to grab that. Love this thing. Titanium doesn't retain the heat. So you can actually burn this on top of, uh, they did a, a test actually with a manufacturer on top of a car hood. Like a really expensive car hood. So now we'll start feeding the bigger sticks in. Gonna make sure we keep fuel in here. Keep it going. And the wind, as you see, I was concerned about this. The wind is really making it burn hot and fast. So I'm going to make sure I keep on top of this fuel with bigger and bigger sticks. Oh, it's like a... There we 
There we go. Okay. So, let's see here. There. Okay. There's my canteen cup. Let's put some water in it. See if we can boil the water. Whoops, actually, I wanted to do a little test. See how long it takes to boil the water. So we got our fire going, and it is 11.54. So let's get the water on top of there, and we'll watch it. We'll do some other stuff too while it's boiling. Something to keep in mind I mean, I brought water, of course, but um, we could have purified water. I thought about doing that. We're on a river after all. Um, the thing about that is you can use chemicals, that type of thing, filters, and 98, 99%. The only sure way to uh, purify water is to boil it. And some people would say, you know, two, three minutes is fine. I think it was Cornell University. They did a study here in New York, and 10 minutes is what's required to kill everything in the water. So you don't want to boil the water for anything less than 10. Keep in mind, um, you know, especially in this river, there's factories, that type of thing. You, you may also want to filter it. You may want to filter it and boil it. In this way, you get rid of chemicals because um, boiling it won't kill chemicals. It'll still be in there. So you may want to do a two or, sta a two or three stage treatment. You know, maybe uh, the first step would um, run the river water through a clean cloth or a coffee filter or something like that to get rid of the sediment and dirt and then use some kind of a filter and then some people would say it's overkill it depends on where you are what your situation is what you have okay so we're just feeding the fire make sure it keeps going it's coming along pretty well you can even stick some sticks in top like that The whole goal is just to keep um, oxygen flowing and um, fuel. Because you make fire with three things really, oxygen, fuel, and heat. And the heat was my ferocium rod, the fuel was the tinder and the sticks, and as the, actually the winds died down a little bit so this is good. Because it has, you can actually see how it's designed the holes all around um, to get oxygen in there. And it's really designed extremely well. Good support, supporting the canteen cup. Water's already getting warm. Can't wait to have some pine needle tea. Let's see if I can get Tim to try some too. <laughs> By the way, the pine we're using is white pine. And I'll show you the needles here shortly. Got to keep this thing fed though. I don't want it to go out. That would kind of ruin the video, wouldn't it? So. And you can use bigger logs too. To stick in the side here. I'm just using the smaller ones. I've got some larger ones. Maybe I'll start switching the larger ones. They're pretty darn dry. Lots of this stuff around. Okay. So here's the white pine. And um, you see, you know, it looks, looks fluffier than some of the pines, that type of thing. But the way to tell really is the needles, each set of needles, I'm gonna try and come close to the camera, you can see that they have five needles. The white pine, each set, the joins in the bottom, has five needles. That's the white pine, and it's the best. It's the most edible. Um, you can eat the inner bark. Um, there's, a, there's a multitude of things. But the cool thing about pine, white pine, is that it's higher in vitamin C than um, the, the you know oranges, that type of thing, lemons. Um, just a ton of vitamin C. 
and um, <laughs> actually what normally what we should do is um, probably pre-rinse this and maybe I'll stick it in a river over here because um, I've made white or pine needle tea before and at the end <laughs> you have your tea and there's spiders and bugs there's all kinds of things living in here so um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it off in here actually on second thought this is the Oswego River um, there's chemicals and all types of things out there that I don't want to mess with so we won't get into that I'm gonna deal with uh, whatever bugs and such are in my pine needle tea in fact since we're gonna be adding honey we'll just have honey bugs <laughs> it'll, it'll taste fine okay feed this a little bit more make sure it has plenty of fuel Yeah, the Oswego River here isn't known to be um, one of the best rivers around, unfortunately. It's a fun river to kayak and canoe on, as I do both. I think that has enough fuel for a little bit here. So I want to show you something interesting. Um, in another video, you'll notice um, one of my other videos, I, I looked at this tree and I showed you a whole bunch of poison ivy on it. That was um, in the summer, I believe it was. So another time of the year, I want to show you the poison ivy. I don't know how, Tim, how close Tim can get, but you see these vines climbing up the tree? Right here. And we've actually got grape vines, this one, inter intertwined with them. Um, this is a grape vine. The ones on this tree right here our poison ivy this is not see the furry ones yeah not good stuff um, so keep in mind you can actually get the the oils in poison ivy are stable I think for up to here it's an extremely stable oil um, so be careful you can get it year-round too but uh, down here is a plant that once uh, the pot and actually right now I wouldn't eat it because it's around poison ivy I think I'm gonna pluck it right here it's called live forever Another name is Orpine, I believe it is. And my mother once uh, has it around her house, and I believe she calls it sedum. Uh, but it's edible. And they call it live forever, not because if you eat it, you'll live forever. But if you pluck it, they say, and you, you, know, you put it somewhere, it'll sprout again. And if you can see it down here, Tim, is that tree in the way? So there's that. There's another one over here just popped up in the spring. I noticed it a moment ago. Um, I learned it, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago or so. <clears throat> it's called Colt's Foot. Um, it looks kind of like dandelion. In fact, Dan, Tim said, hey, is that dandelion? Um, no, there's some more over here. It's Colt's Foot. And, and um, there's a couple different types of Colt's Foot, but they say the flowers in there, so they're edible. Um, do your own research, as always. It's your responsibility, and, and do this type of thing with an expert. I'm just telling you um, this information because that, that's what's popped into my head. You do do your own research and, and your own learning and that type of thing. Just information while we're waiting for the water to boil. Oh, it's coming up. It's steaming pretty heavily, actually, if you can see it. Boy, it burns really quick and hot. Got to keep giving it fuel. It's an awesome stove. And I haven't taken up a big fire bed. I don't have an expanding fire and, and uh, just this little extremely light ember lit stove. Actually, what I'm going to do now, eh, I want the water to boil first. I was going to start to put the pine needles in. But since we got this test going to see how long it takes to cook, we'll put the pine needles in after. See, just like that, I put a little fuel in, it starts firing up pretty hard again. They hadn't gone down, they hadn't died rather, it had gone down a bit, the fire. 
Actually, we've got bubbles. Can you come on over here, Tim? I'll show you. It's 12.03. What time did we start this, Tim? 54, I think it was. We'll show you on the video. <laughs> so about nine minutes. Let me have boiling. Yep, rolling water. There we go. So, we're going to put our pine needles. You can chop them up. Actually, there's all kinds of things floating around in there. Well, you can chop up the pine needles. I just do this. Get all the spiders and everything off of it. Heck, it's pine needle tea, you know? It's okay if you eat a spider now and again, right? It's going to be tasty and refreshing. Great on this cold day. Pretty simple, huh? It's at a rolling boil now. I'm probably going to take that off of there in a little bit. And we don't need to boil the whole time. Yeah. Let's set this over here to steep. And our pine needle tea is coming along. I don't know if there's a formula about how much how many needles to put in here. I just kind of pack them in there. I'm going to make sure it's tasty. Quite a bit in there. <laughs> Little things floating around in there. So our pine needle tea, we'll let it sit for a few minutes. Stir it around a bit. Then I'm going to pull the pine needles out. I'm probably going to use my Leatherman multi tool. And then we'll put a little uh, honey in there and we'll taste it. It's going to be very refreshing. Might as well let our emberlit fire go out. Let's see, anything else we can talk about while we're sitting here waiting? Okay, let's talk about the honey that we're about to do, use rather. Um, we recently picked up honey from a, a gentleman that, uh, I think he's a retired school teacher, but he's been a bee beekeeper for I think like 20, 30 years. And um, he has a place in New York and Florida. Um, good thing about honey is um, you, if you buy it locally and you regularly use honey, it can actually help you with your allergies. So keep that in mind if you want to buy your local honey. There's many other reasons why you'd buy honey as well. It's a, there's a whole list on our website, but we carry several different sizes. And you don't necessarily want to buy honey at the local grocery store unless you really know where it's from. Um, they also, they, 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 um, they do different things to, to cook the bad, the, the stuff, rather the good stuff out of the honey. Um, pure natural honey is what we sell, and it's the real deal. It's good stuff. We also sell honeycombs, which is very cool. Um, I don't know if you've ever chewed on a honeycomb. It's like, you know, the original form of gum. So you've got the wax and it's coated in honey. It's covered in honey, and you just chew on it. You chew the, uh, the you, you suck the, the, the honey away, and you're left with the wax from the honeycomb. And you can chew on it. It's really, it's really nice. It's refreshing. So keep that in mind. We're going to put the honey in here in a little bit. And check out our website um, for all of our different types of honeys. I think we have about eight to ten bullet points about the awesome stuff that, that honey is good for. And uh, honey, uh, by the way, it's the longest shelf life food there is. They found honey in, I think, ancient tombs 
um, and it's still good. The stuff is amazing. And it, you might see if it crystallizes that type of thing. Uh, you might think it's bad if you just heat it up. Um, it comes back to its natural state and you're fine. I'm thinking just another moment or two on the uh, pine needle tea. Pine needle and spider tea. So we let the pine needles uh, sit in here for about 10 minutes or so. I'm going to kind of grab them all out of here for our pine needle tea. And uh, Tim says I'm not a tea drinker, I'm a coffee drinker, so I'm not sure I can get him to do it. But uh, I sure as heck am going to, regardless of all the little things floating in here. <laughs> they can't hurt you. They're good for you. Protein. Okay. So I'm going to. Um, I'm thinking about coming over and showing you. I'm not sure you'll be able to see this. Yeah, Tim, if you could come on over here, maybe show you. It's, um, doesn't, it gets a little bit cloudier. Uh, it doesn't really change color uh, like some teas would. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. And of course, there's some things in the bottom that's okay. They're not going to hurt me. So now, I'm going to get my uh, spoon, or, for, or knife rather. Of course, I didn't make this. I guess I didn't plan too well for this video. We could have made a spoon too. So, get some of our honey in here. And I can't wait. I'm very excited about this. I'll let you know how it tastes. Bunch of honey, yum. Can never have too much. Mmm. Extremely good. Man. Very tasty. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, on the Emberlet, um, I'm grabbing this right now. Heck, we, we just, we were steaming hot a moment ago. I'm touching the thing, and it's fine. Titanium uh, doesn't retain heat that, you know, that long. So another good thing about this thing. Mm. Tasting my pine needle tea that I cooked over uh, my Amberlit stove in my canteen cup. Can't believe you're not going to try this, Tim. Extremely good. Your wife would still love you. She'd let you kiss her. Very tasty. I'm going to finish this. So, uh, in our video, um, everything here is from CampingSurvival.com. My trusty Leatherman, I used it for several things. Uh, one of my favorite little small day packs. I like how it sits in the middle of my back. My canteen cup. Use it for a multitude of things. The ember lit stove. The honey. Um, what else have we used here? And of course, you see my paracord shoelaces and my boots. Oh, that's another thing I want to mention too. Um, dryer lint. We use dryer lint to start this fire with. Threw a spark at it. Um, you also, I mean, look at all this all over my socks. If you have cotton socks, real cotton, um, you can scrape it off with your knife. You know, build up a bunch of uh, a tinder for yourself. It's pretty much dryer lint. It's the same darn thing. So keep that in mind if you're in a survival situation. Um, even if it's not cotton, uh, you really cotton kills. They say it retains water, and that's not such a good thing. But it, these socks would work as well too. Um, wool, that type of thing. So keep that in mind. I'm all sticky. I'm going to finish my pine needle, tea, pine needle tea off camera. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to us and like us on Facebook Camping Survival. There's a subscribe button, I think, in the top left-hand corner of this image, or this video, rather. And uh, thank you for hanging out with us a little bit, and have a nice day.